Hey, this is Eric from Farpoint Farms. I want to do a, an informational video today. There's a lot of confusion out there. I know a lot of people buying riding mowers, lawn mowers, lawn tractors, yard tractors, garden tractors. And uh, most people don't realize what the actual differences between those are. So I have a few examples here and I'll go over what exactly the differences are. Um, I don't really have any riding mowers. Riding mowers would be a rear engine riding mower or a very low end small uh, motored riding mower. I'll show some pictures of them here and here's another one here. Um, those are riding mowers and the difference between a riding motor a mower and a lawn tractor is the riding mower is just for mowing lawns. It doesn't really have any capacity to tow or haul anything uh, like a dump cart like I have right here. That's a little dump cart. I think I paid 50 bucks for it and it came in a box about the size of a pack of matches. <laughs> a lot of assembly required. Anyway, uh, to use something like this, you have to move up to a lawn tractor, an LT, or a yard tractor, a YT. And what's the difference between the two? Really, there is no difference between the two. It's a marketing thing. Usually, a lawn tractor is a slightly smaller version of a yard tractor. It may have a smaller motor. It might have slightly smaller wheels. Um, the first one I'm going to show you right here is this. And this is a uh, Craftsman Yard Tractor 3000 series. This is a 2013 model. It came with a 21 horsepower single cylinder Briggs & Stratton engine and a 42 inch cutting deck. It has a hydrostatic automatic transmission which is a Tough Torque K46, a relatively lightweight transmission. With this mower uh, you can plow a flat driveway in the winter time with the right equipment or you can pull this little cart that I just showed you and you can push and pull around maybe 200 pounds on top of your frame which is probably another 150 to 200 pounds and uh, you can mow the lawn. Uh, there's other attachments you can get for it. You can put a little dethatcher on the back of it and drag it around with some cinder blocks on it and uh, dethatch your lawn or aerate your lawn with an aerator, a plug aerator. Those are things that this mower is quite capable of doing. Now you'll notice on this mower uh, there's obviously been some changes and I'll show that to you. Where I live is in a very steep mountainous region and in the winter time we do get a lot of snow. Now this unit is not really used in the winter time but it is used to go up and down some very steep areas and in order to do that properly I had to get rid of the stock tires that were on there There's what those stock tires look like you'll see this at any store you go to those are called turf savers the reason they're called turf savers is because they don't have a lot of bite if you have a nice flat lawn and it's relatively dry that'll be just fine if you have a nice steep lawn and it's not relatively dry you will drive this thing right off a cliff I found these tires, which are called ag tires or chevron tires, lug tires, and uh, they didn't cost a whole lot. I think I paid fifty dollars for two of them. And this is called a wheel weight. And if you want to do anything with snow, or you really want to be able to bite in, if you want to buy the plug aerators or a dethatcher, you need to have more weight lower to the ground. And so you go and buy a set of these, and that'll get you the the weight where you need it because the things naturally have a high center of gravity. So, she's dirty because she's just gotten used today. And that's what she looks like. Now this is a one wheel drive. Um, that means that uh, if this tire starts spinning, this tire won't get you out of it. It just won't turn. So uh, all the more reason to have ag tires or chains if you're going to try to use this in an area that has um, a steep inclines or if you're going to be doing any kind of snow plowing in the winter time and I wouldn't do any snow plowing in the winter time with this if you have any hills at all. If you have a flat driveway and some chains and some weights you're probably okay. So that's how this operates. Very common tractor. Very common tractor. A lot of people buy these for their house. I think Sears says this is good from one to two acres. I'm beating the bejesus out of mine and asking it to mow six acres. I don't expect it to last forever. Um, but it'll last a good long time because I'm a mechanic and I can fix stuff when it breaks. So that is a yard tractor. The only difference between it and a lawn tractor is the name. The engine on a lawn tractor versus this tractor would probably be maybe a horsepower or two less. 
The deck size is probably about the same. The tires may be an inch or two smaller. The seat may be an inch or two lower. But uh, they use the same chassis, the same gauge of steel, and pretty much the same components. My last tractor was a Sears uh, LT lawn tractor 1000, which was basically the bottom end. I did get the hydrostatic transmission in it as well. It lasted me 13 years and roughly 700 hours before I finally pretty much wore out. And of course I could have brought it back from the dead, but at that point it had served itself quite well. Okay, so that is the consumer grade tractor. Now I'm going to move up. Uh, oh, by the way, this is a Craftsman tractor, but it, it's made by Husqvarna. Husqvarna makes a lot of tractors you're going to find with different names on it. So Now we're going to move up to a real Husqvarna tractor. And that is this big boy here. Really, they look an awful lot alike, don't they? Of course, the deck is missing on this because I'm not using it as a mower right now. I'm using it as a tractor. So what's the difference between this and this? Because they sure do look a lot alike, don't they? Well, a garden tractor is rated for ground engaging. Ground engaging is an item like this. That's where you use downward force in the way of the tractor, and the tractor has to overcome the effort that it's going to take to rip the ground apart with that. And that's what this one is set up to do. I just got done using this to turn my garden, and uh, I'll show you what it is that makes this different, uh, because they do look the same. But, uh, like I said, so this is actually Husqvarna's absolute top of the line. This is a GT52. XLSI, uh, and I'll get into exactly how fancy this thing is in another video, but the difference that you see here is that, and you can see, here's a perfect example of this. Here's your turf saver tires, and you'll notice that they're absolutely covered in mud. The treads are completely covered. They offer very little to no grip whatsoever. Now on the back, I also have ag tires. I've also added chains on this, and look, there's some dirt in there, but there's still plenty of bite. And there's wheel weights on this one as well. Now you'll notice the tires, while the same ag tires and the same weights, these are actually quite a bit larger. Uh, those are 20 inch tires and these are 23 inch tires. A garden tractor, generally speaking, will have 23 inch or larger tires on it. Anything less than 23 is a light garden tractor or a yard tractor or a lawn tractor. It may look big and beefy, but it's not. Uh, and the difference with those bigger tires, you get a bigger axle and a bigger transmission to go with it. That allows you the extra energy to be able to pull things like this. So, this is also a hydrostatic transmission made by Tough Torque, but it is not a K46, which is a light duty transmission. This is a K66, which is a much heavier duty transmission. It's rated to pull heavier weights and do heavier things. This one is actually a super top of the line model. It is a K66 ELI, or ELD, sorry. And that stands for Electronic Locking Differential. And that comes in super handy up here in the mountains. You have a nice switch right here. And when you push that, an electronic solenoid inside the transmission locks the rear differential. And that is very helpful. So when you are driving and trying to plow snow with this thing, if this wheel starts to spin, that wheel spins as well. So both of them will dig in at the same time. I used this all last year on a quarter mile long driveway that I have. It is extremely steep. I plowed with it many times and I never got stuck. So uh, I consider that a success. So another difference between your lawn tractor, yard tractor, riding mower, and a garden tractor is the fuel tank size because generally speaking these boogers have a much bigger engine. This is a single, single cylinder Briggs & Stratton 21 horsepower. It carries a two gallon fuel tank. This is a dual cylinder, 26 horsepower Briggs & Stratton. It carries a four and a half gallon fuel tank. It also has a slightly nicer seat with nice fold down uh, armrests, which is very helpful when plowing in the winter time. Um, like it comes with a deck on it. That's a big old deck. It was a 52 inch deck and uh, I took it off because most of the time I'm using this either for snow plowing or garden work or regrading the driveway, things like that. On the front here, I've added on the brackets for the snow plow. And uh, it also comes with hour gauge and an amp meter. Or generally speaking, the lower end 
lawn tractors may have an amp meter some of them don't have any meters um, this one here I like to keep track of uh, the hours on my mower so I can know when to change the oil and do the filters so I added an hour meter to it but it did not come with one from the factory and that was a relatively high-end uh, yard tractor there's the YT 3000 I think there's only the 4000 above it but uh, so basically this one here can do a whole lot of things without wearing itself down and this one here looks like it can do a whole lot of things without wearing itself down but if you try to use this and garden away like crazy with it or try to put a uh, back blade on it and regrade your driveway it will do it for about a hundred hours maybe even less and then the transmission will be burned completely up and you won't have any pull that means it'll run perfectly because the motor is pretty strong but the transmission which is a K46 will have cooked itself now the good news is transmissions are relatively cheap for this model K46 transmission new in the box is like 250 bucks you can take it out in the weekend and put a one back in there and be back on the road for another 60 to 100 hours if that's the way you want to do it um, a transmission for this one is about 1600 bucks and I hope to God I don't have to replace it anytime soon of course there's rebuild kits and I'd probably do that at some point maybe around five or six hundred hours uh, if I beat it up the way I've been beating it up but if I take good care of it uh, it should last a long time I'm gonna do fluid changes every 50 hours on it and hopefully in two or three years I'll give you another update on it and show you how awesome it is so what the heck is this thing well that's something you can only get on a garden tractor this one's real high-end um, it is called a sleeve hitch and that's how you hook up ground engaging implements um, you know this is this is for tearing up dirt um, you can get a disc harrow set for it for making rows which I also have um, you can also get a moldboard plow which is uh, for turning soil over in the winter time and first thing in the spring and that is uh, it puts a hell of a strain on it I've got one of those as well then you've got a grater a rear blade box blade is called um, I've got one of those for the back all those require that uh, you have that sleeve hitch instead of just a regular pin set up like this one has that's just a pin there and you can tow your uh, lightweight implements like your your little cart and uh, you know an air plug aerator and a dethatcher those those things I think a leaf catcher will also fit that uh, but if you want to have stuff that's going to rip the earth or sculpt the land you're going to have to have a sleeve hitch this one doesn't look like the one you're going to find uh, most of the time online. This was a Sears sleeve hitch. Uh, however, I upgraded it. I modified it and upgraded it. Instead of having a manual sleeve hitch, this now has a, uh, a hydraulic piston. And uh, that, was, that was kind of expensive, but it makes all the difference in the world. It provides downward force, I think, up to 500 pounds. So you can really rip out some stumps and stuff like that with it. Let's see if I can operate that while I'm still showing you. I can reach the switch. And that's it. So if you're going to get serious about, you know, maybe you've got a small homestead you're working on like I do, and you want to have your garden plot, and you have a nice long driveway that's gravel, and you want to be able to maintain it, um, you're going to need this stuff. So uh, I'll do another video just on the garden tractor. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say you can't do this and you can't do that. The truth is, with the right equipment, uh, you don't have to spend $25,000 to have, uh, you know, a, a Kubota or John Deere X-Series or, you know, you don't need a subcompact tractor. You can get away with a garden tractor. I've got uh, about $4,500 between the tractor, the tires, the chains, the weights, the sleeve hitch, the sleeve hitch upgrade, and five or six good uh, implements. And with that, I can do just about everything you need to do on a farm. I can uh, turn my garden in the winter. I can rip my garden in the spring and then I can plow my garden and get the disc hair out and get it nice and get my rows nice and done and uh, matter of fact today I was just going between the rows and breaking up the earth again to get, keep the weeds down and uh, like I said I've got about a quarter mile long driveway and it, it kind of needs to be regraded again I did it first thing after the last snowfall this year maybe in February now let's see when I've been end of March and uh, it goes on and 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 on, and on forever. So uh, I'm going to have to redo that shortly. And that's that's probably two or three hours worth of work with that rear blade, that box blade. Um, so that's it. So if, you, if you're going to buy a mower and you are a homeowner who has a half acre, 
to uh, let's say two acres of relatively flat ground or even slightly hilly ground and uh, you're not going to have a garden or you're not going to not going to be doing any uh, you know gravel work um, or need to have a front scoop for this thing this this also has a front end loader for it uh, I'll take you down there and show you that um, that this is totally what you need here more than enough I paid 11 maybe hundred dollars for this thing on sale it's a 2013 model right now it's got about a hundred hours on it I just did a tune up on it and I'm hoping to get uh, at least 700 hours out of it before it's done I'm hoping not to have to do any major rebuilds uh, anytime sooner than that and um, this one here is a 2014 and this one is not going to be used as a mower it's just going to be used as a tractor it has about 40 hours on it because uh, it gets used a lot in the spring, fall, and winter. And uh, it was $3,500. But again, this is an absolute top of the line. This one's got all kinds of features and doodads you may not need. Um, but if you're going to be a homesteader, you're going to want to get something that starts with GT. Not LGT, not LT, and not YT, but GT. And uh, Husqvarna makes them. Uh, Cub Cadet makes them. And John Deere makes them. You're looking, you know, between a low end of maybe $2,800 to a high end of maybe $4,900. If you want to go below, above that, you're looking at Simplicity Models, John Deere, and uh, Kubota. They all make subcompact tractors that look a lot like this, but have extremely durable components and diesel engines. But you're also looking at a base price of $10,000 to deck one out with all the doodads. Uh, you're looking at uh, $24,000. I know because I priced them out. No matter what company you went with, it always ended up being right around $24,000. So $4,500 or $25,000, you decide. I'll walk down there and, and show you some of the other in implements that I have for this thing, but that's, that's, that's pretty much what you need to know. So, you know, a half acre to two acres, relatively flat land, maybe a small driveway to plow, riding mower, lawn tractor, yard tractor, no problems. If you want to be a homesteader and try to have a big garden or you have a large driveway to plow or you just have a lot of driveway gravel that needs to be pushed around or you're going to need to use a scoop to move tons of mulch or dirt, you're going to need to step up to a garden tractor if you want it to last a long time. So that's pretty much the way it is. Let's go down to the bottom barn there and we'll shoo some animals out of the way and I'll show you the other implements I have for the garden tractor. Whew. Okay. All right, so uh, here we are, and you can see I've got tools everywhere for this thing. We'll go over them, I'll show you. Like I said, $4,500 for an enormous variety of tools capable of doing an enormous variety of projects. First of all, there is a set of uh, the uh, turf saver tires, and like they're useless. You can't, you can't use those for real work. I found even with a set of chains, they were still kind of dangerous. So, uh, Anyway, let's go down. Let's go down the line here. That right there is called a tractor scoop. Um, think of it as a uh, front end bucket loader. You use that uh, drive into piles of gravel, drive into piles of dirt, drive into piles of mulch, or even driving into the side of a hill. You scoop up uh, as much as you can get into the bucket. And you've got two levers that one and that one. And using those two levers, you raise the bucket up and tilt the bucket towards you. And then you can drive to wherever you want to, lower the bucket back down, and drop your contents. I have used this exact one, which was made by Husqvarna, or manufactured by Husqv for Husqvarna. I've used this thing, and I have probably, and I'm not exaggerating, I moved, I know for a fact I moved 60 tons of gravel. And, uh... And it was, I mean, 60 tons of gravel by a wheelbarrow or 60 tons of gravel while sitting on a mower listening to music. It's just, you know, no contest. So in that sense right there, it paid for itself. It was about 400 bucks at the time. I think they've gone up. I think they're closer to $500. But let me see if I can get that. There you go. There's the part numbers for it. Okay. Well, I've also used it. Uh, I know I got about... Three large loads of, gra of uh, mulch that I put down with it, and I have used it to move some dirt too, but not not very much dirt. So uh, I'm gonna move on over here and get around this. I'm gonna turn it sideways there. That's the deck for this thing, the mower deck, 52 inches, um, welded steel, lifetime warranty on that. And it's a shame because I'll probably never use it. Um, but there it is. That's 
That's what it looks like. Just like the other one, just much heavier duty. -er. Right. And then over here, let's see if I can get a light on this thing here. Hold on a second. Okay, over there is the, that's what was hooked up outside. That's the, uh, that's a ripper basically. You, you know, raise and lower that and you can tear up, uh, you know, grass, mulch, or not mulch, but grass. It'll tear through roots, pull rocks out of the ground. Uh, if you're preparing land for the first time or uh, you don't have a moldboard plow, this, this pretty much does the trick. And you use this thing and then you follow it up with this thing, which is a uh, disc harrow. Hook that to the back of it and uh, that cuts your rows. You can change the angle right there and there. Turns your rows either tighter or looser. You have wider rows or narrower rows. Um, these two items were both made by AgFab and uh, they make a lot of the components for um, garden tractors. They, like a Husqvarna or a Craftsman part is probably either made by Brinley or AgFab and uh, these two were made by AgFab. So, walk over here, show you. And right there was a Craftsman, probably made by AgFab or Brinley, but that is the uh, dozer blade. And the difference between a regular snowplow blade and a dozer blade is dozer blade's made for garden tractor. It's a lot heavier, dutier, and uh, it's capable of uh, moving earth as well as gravel, as well as snow. Snow blade is lighter weight, has much lighter springs and is designed for pushing snow and nothing else. You can see the size of those springs. Um, there's the... Alright, there's the... That's the model number there for it. Again, this booger was about 400 bucks, and it earned its keep uh, almost immediately upon purchase. Got, again, like this scoop, it's got two, two levers, using the two levers to raise and lower the blade or angle the blade to the left, the right, or the center. You can pretty much do everything from the seat of your tractor and rock and roll with it. I pushed uh, the biggest snowfall, single snowfall I pushed with it was eight inches. And I'm gonna say that was probably the max. You know, I have a very steep driveway and you're either gonna cause slippage or you're just gonna get stuck if you try to push far more than that. But um, for what it was, it paid for itself very rapidly. This is a rear box blade. As you can see, I beat the hell out of it. It's got the sides are bent on it. It has a ripper bar with it as well. Um, I've never used the ripper bar, and I never intend to. Um, I just use it for straightening the driveway. Um, we have heavy rains here at times, especially in the spring, and uh, you get ruts and washboarding, and, and this thing is perfect for that. This is a Brinley. And uh, you have a lever here, which I can't operate from the seat, but... Uh, it gives you the opportunity you see the three holes center left and right just just like just like the plow so you can move dirt to the center keep it straight or move it right you could use this for clearing well i use it basically for the road i mean i use it for the quarter mile of driveway i've got but you could use it to flatten a piece of property or do building or whatnot um, i'm sure there's other uses for it i just that's that's what i bought it for it was less than 200 dollars, and um the side pieces I don't really care about because they're kind of just there. If they break completely off, it won't affect the usage of the of the rest of the tool. Uh, and then over here, this was very inexpensive. This could be used on a uh, lawn tractor, riding mower, or yard tractor. This is a spreader, broadcast spreader. Um, I use it in the springtime for spreading fertilizer, and I use it in the wintertime for spreading uh, salt. If we get an ice storm, sometimes I do salt so uh, sections of the driveway that remain shaded. And, uh, you know, doing that with it is probably not going to last many years, but it was less than $100 from Sears, and uh, it worked just fine last year, and I'm sure it'll work fine through the summer. I've already used it twice this year for spreading fertilizer and lime. Uh, very inexpensive, just beats walking. And then lastly, that is a moldboard plow, and, uh, and it's pretty serious business. You can cut a deep, deep hole with that thing, and basically this section right here digs in and rips the dirt and you can see how this is kind of arced. It rolls the dirt over to the side so you end up with a nice deep ravine that you've cut into whatever it is you're doing. Um, the main use, the use that it was designed for, is uh, for turning your garden at the end of the year and then you use it again in the spring to turn it one more time before using the other two items I showed you. <laughs> What I've found is it has a lot more usage 
Uh, I have uh, heavy rains here in the spring and uh, sure beats using a shovel when you need to cut a trench um, just to direct water flow. Drop it in the ground and it makes an instant trench which has come in super handy as well. So you could not you could not use that on a garden track or on a lawn tractor or a riding mower. It would destroy the transmission super fast because it requires an awful lot of effort to peel through dirt six to eight inches deep. Um, and that's it. That's the tools I have. There's more available. Like I said, there's uh, aerator plugs, lawn sweepers. There's all kinds of stuff. There's gas-powered lawn sweepers. I mean, it's just an endless array of add-ons that you can put on these things. These the ones that I've showed you, other than that, are designed solely for a garden tractor. If you use them on a lawn tractor, if you buy a sleeve hitch and modify it to fit on a lawn tractor or a yard tractor, it'll work for a while but it will burn up that transmission and maybe money constraints are leading you towards getting a, a lawn tractor a yard tractor and just making do with it I say go for it just set aside an extra about $250 because every season or two you're gonna have to either rebuild or replace that little transmission there are companies that offer uh, upgrades to your transmission you can replace a K46 lightweight transmission with the K66 transmission but it costs about 1500 bucks, which is the difference in cost of buying a riding mower or lawn tractor versus buying a garden tractor. So, I don't know if you're really saving any money. But, those are them. I'll show, I'm going to grab some still frames here and show you what these things look like, all pretty and shiny and sitting out flat. The first thing we have is the, the uh, dozer blade. And then we have a broadcast spreader. And then we've got a rear blade. We have our moldboard plow. We have a front tractor scoop. A disc harrow. And a rear time tiller, or I call it a ripper. Okay, so that's it. Now you know the difference between a lawn tractor, a riding mower, a yard tractor, a light garden tractor, and a garden tractor. And you know some of the things that it can do. So depending on your needs, you should be able to go out and make an educated purchase. Hope this has helped. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get right back to you on it. I have a wealth of knowledge on these things as I've been a mechanic for over 20 years and uh, been doing the farming thing for a few years now too. That's it. I'm Eric from Farpoint Farms. Have a good day.